Hello everyone, this is Alex here, uh, giving you a construction update on my new uh, N-Scale Railroad that I'm calling Hill Creek Hollow Railroad. Uh, basically, if you've seen my last uh, N-Scale Railroad, it just, it really didn't work. There were tight turns, uh, steep inclines, uh, the track wasn't wired properly, just numerous issues, and it just also looked too busy with way too many tracks to maintain. For such a small layout. So I designed this one here um, that I'm calling Hill Creek Hollow and it's basically just got one main line as opposed to two that I had before and uh, it's made on an entirely uh, new uh, layout board. So using this photograph I will kind of give you a brief tour of Hill Creek Hollow where you see the train parked in the foreground uh, will be the railroad station and um, railroad museum for this little uh, tourist town and on the left is the lake area where a lake kind of surrounds an island and uh, the train will pass around that go underneath a waterfall and then over a canyon that you kind of see in the background and then go around a, a small mountain and then uh, pass through a tunnel and then continue around uh, w meeting the spur line that leads to the uh, uh, rail yard and then crossing over the uh, switch track and then coming around through a forest area back to the station. Uh, on the right hand side you kind of see a little town area, I'll explain a little bit of that later, and then of course like I said now I have a train yard to store all four of the trains that I own. This time around I wanted the layout to be lightweight in case I ever wanted to transport it. So it's made of two sheets of uh, quarter inch plywood um, that I've glued together and nailed together and then uh, the studs are one by twos so it's very lightweight. Over that I placed a series of uh, styrofoam panels and then traced out the track uh, route and then um, the where the hills would be, the valley, where the town would be, and then where the lake would be, and then where the rail yard would be in the back. Um, it was essential for me to make it to make it so the tracks were not um, raised up on very thick styrofoam. It had to be about an inch at most, so that way I could easily drill through it for maintenance. So in this next picture you'll see that I cut out the styrofoam in the areas that I needed and kind of glued it all down together. Um, it was very important that the entire route be flat because in my last layout with my 440 locomotives pulling the heavy long trains that I designed to look like the Disneyland trains, I needed flat uh, track because it just couldn't do the hills last time. So uh, it my layout was designed to be kind of in forced perspective. So the track in the foreground in this photograph um, seems like it's more at ground level, whereas the track that goes around back is uh, appears to be raised up further along a cliff line. So it gives the illusion that the railroad is actually going through several different grades and elevations. Also, the minimum turn radius on this layout is um, 12 inches. Uh, in the last layout it was less and that caused issues. So another problem with my last layout was that I had one turnout per main line, which I had two main lines, so that means I had two turnouts. The most trains I could store uh, was two trains on one track, so I needed a rail yard in this layout. And here I built one that has um, five uh, tracks that allow for storage of all five of my trains. And uh, this was, like I said, very necessary because before I was constantly picking up and taking off uh, cars and switching them out. Now I can switch any one of the five trains onto the main line using a spur line that leads to the rail yard in the back. Altogether now I have four number six left switches and one standard right switch, which I'm regretting the right switch because um, since it's standard, I ha actually have a lot of derailments, even though I have newer um, uh, low profile wheels on all of my old trains. Here you see my tourist freight train crossing over the first of what is going to be three bridges on this layout, and this bridge crosses over a creek that feeds into or out of the lake area and um, it'll look very beautiful and right now I have the uh, styrofoam there because I'm waterproofing the area so I can do water effects later. 
Um, but uh, I learned a lot of new things by um, since I got rid of my last layout, such as how to properly install the track and to properly solder the joints and everything, make the track very smooth um, so that way I don't get derailments. And so far, it's working out very well. Um, and this photograph shows uh, how the train will look kind of going around the bend. So here is the town area. Um, the tracks cross over the third bridge right here um, over a, a road. And that road leads into the town area right where the Gorilla Glue is. And it's going to be kind of like Main Street at Disneyland, except more realistic looking. And, um, and it's basically going to be part of the tourist town. It's going to be very nice looking. Um, and uh, it'll be surrounded by hills that'll be covered in trees and uh, maybe small cabins everywhere. Um, and so this is a, a last look at the whole layout. You can see that the mountain range in the background kind of obstructs the view of the rail yard. That's kind of how I wanted it. So now you're going to see some video footage that I took today of the train um, running. This is my CK Holiday 440. Um, it's getting kind of old. I've had it for a long time, maybe around five years now. Um, and so it, it's losing a bit of traction as it gets around some of the tighter curves. Um, but it still works, and I plan on buying a new 440 soon um, to run on it. And um, basically, it was very important for me not to have the turns too tight. I know that a 12 inch radius does sound like a tight turn, but all my cars are kind of like they're kind of older cars from an, uh, an older time so they're shorter um, and they can make the turns a lot easier um, and also I've updated the cars so that way they have the the latest low profile wheel sets and um, and well what was the latest couplers now they have more prototypical accurate couplers but um, anyway so now you see the train pulling into the station area and uh, this is where the museum is. People can walk up to those locomotives in the background and, uh, and kind of look around. All those locomotives were locomotives that I previously owned and most of them no longer work anymore uh, except for um, the uh, Santa Fe diesel that was in that uh, image. Uh, now the train is going around the Riverbend area. Um, this is once again a, a, a 24 inch diameter turn radius, but it, it's very easy for my 440 to make it around. Now the Bicentennial train is a different story altogether because it's 14 heavy cars that my diesel train has to haul and it, when it gets around these tight curves it does kind of slow down a bit, but it doesn't come to a stop and the wheels don't slide, so that's good for now. Um, once again, this layout is far better than my last one. Even though there's less tracks and things, it, it, the trains run more efficiently on this layout, which is what I love. I mean, this train is going at speed 20 right now. I couldn't get it to do that on my last layout. The wiring was terrible. Um, the train was always derailing on every little thing because I just didn't know enough about laying track back then. And now I can get the train to run even slower than this. I can get it to run at, at speed 15, which is at a crawl. Um, and overall, the trains just run way more efficiently um, on this track. And so I really don't have any regrets, except for I wish the, the whole layout was a bit wider than just three feet, um, because I wanted to put slightly bigger turns on it. Now that's the interesting thing is that uh, I wanted tight curves so I could see the trains go around tight curves, but they couldn't be too tight because then the trains wouldn't be able to make it around. His, here is the area where the CK Holiday actually struggles to get traction. A, a little bit, I, I must uh, say. It's, it doesn't completely lose traction, but it does kind of struggle. And I love having the number six turnouts. My last layout had standard and that was causing a lot of derailments. Why I chose to bring back one standard and put it on this layout, I have no idea, but it doesn't cause that much trouble because I have a, a train that goes over the, the standard very easily and the standard's all the way in the rail yard where I don't have to worry about it. So anyway, maybe in the future I'll fix that part. 
but um, overall I'm very happy with this layout. I think it'll look very beautiful. I also designed it because in my last layout I put trees and shrubs and things just anywhere and that became a problem because when I had to clean the tracks my fat hands would just mow down all the trees and anything in the way. So this layout I designed so that way there's plenty of space for my hands to get everywhere. Even though there's one tunnel on this layout, the tunnel is only two inches in depth. So I can actually reach my fingers into the tunnel and clean it. Um, I like tunnels, but I also don't ever want to have to deal with maintaining tracks in a tunnel. My tracks tend to get dirtier than other people's tracks. Maybe that's because of the rubber tires on my trains. I don't know. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to bring more videos out soon. Uh, thanks for watching.